Hi, I'm Terry Cravens, and my husband and I own Barcy Bar Performance Horses. Uh, we do a lot of you know breeding and uh, boarding of horses here. Uh, we've been running the the broodmare part of the horses for several years. Uh, we do anything with the mare side of equine reproduction. Uh, today we're going to be talking to you about uh, some of the the handling, the general handling, how we secure the mares during uh, the vet work that's being performed, uh, the record keeping behind it, and just in general some of the just general cleanliness and disinfectant, uh, how we handle those situations with uh, with all we do this for the public as well as for our personal use. And uh, I'm just excited to be here and be able to talk with you about it. Good morning. Uh, right here you see our palpation chute. This is where we bring the mares in in order for the vet to be able to check them and uh, just see their stage of ovulation uh, or if we need to do any cultures or anything else with her, this is where they go. The, uh, we try to make it convenient for the vet. So we have paper towels right here. We've got electrical power right here in case, you know, for, to plug in the ultrasound, uh, if we need a light, anything else right here. We fix this to actually hold the ultrasound machine. Uh, the gates are made to open easily and secure the mare here. Uh, this right here uh, uh, prevents the mare from being able to kick. So it's a, very, it's a safety measure to make sure that uh, everybody, the horse, the vet, everybody is, is protected here. Uh, we also, a, a necessity for the uh, palpation shoot is water. So we've got right here, easily accessible, hot and cold running water uh, that you know, we just have heated so that it's comfortable for the mare when we're rinsing her off. So you'll notice around the palpation chute here, uh, we've got some fencing. It's very secure fencing. Uh, a lot of times the mares that come in here for breeding or, or checking may have foal on them. So in this way it helps us secure the foal. We're able to just slide this door shut up here to where the vet's working. Uh, we've got gates on each side. You'll notice just in case we need to, you know, make a quick exit out one side or the other. Um, but otherwise, you'll see the fencing is all secure horse wire uh, with the steel surrounding. So the foal is going to be very safe in this environment. All right, so now I'll show you how we put the mare into the stocks uh, in order to make it, you know, safe for everyone. This is Fancy and Milena. Fancy is due on February 15th. So we just lock the mare in. We secure, always secure the mare first. Then we step up and secure the back panel. Step up one step. Okay. So now you can see she's secure. Um, if that needs to come in here and do anything, we're able to, um, you know, just work with her um, as, as we need to. All right, we're back again here. You've seen the palpation shoot where we put the mares in for the vet to check. Now let's talk a little bit about the supplies that you need to have on hand uh, when the vet's getting ready to do their work. So it's good to keep them all close and handy right here so the vet can just step around, grab what they need, go right back. So paper towels, always a necessity. Um, one of the real important things that you'll see in later uh, videos is when the vet needs to palpate the mare or inseminate the mare, you have these beautiful sleeves. Uh, I'm not going to demo the actual putting on because it's ugly. <laughs> but you'll see it's just a shoulder length sleeve. Put your arm in and be able to then uh, uh, very cleanly be able to check, work on checking the mare. We've got additional supplies that can be necessary. Uh, when There's a difference between when the vet is checking the mare just to check cycle versus when she's going to inseminate the mare. With insemination, we use sterile sleeves. So there, they come individually wrapped. It's basically the same sleeve as you saw here, but it is sterile, uh, which is better for the environment when she's actually inserting the semen in through the cervix. Uh, we have sterile lubricant that goes along, of course, with the insemination of the mare. Uh, when we're doing that work, we will wrap the tail. 
to keep all of the hair out of the way. So we keep vet wrap on hand. Uh, again, it just keeps the environment cleaner. Uh, we always have on hand a bedding scrub, which just helps with the cleaning, cleaning of the mare and making sure again, the, the whole environment there is clean uh, for, the, for the mare. Uh, we've got sponges, you know, just gauze sponges. Uh, we keep those handy. Uh, we keep pipettes handy. Uh, this is, again, for the insertion of the, of the semen when we, when we reach that point. And it's just a long pipette. It's, they're, they're individually wrapped, so they are sterile at the time. And it's very simple with the sleeve, and we just put the semen here and insert the entire, you know, this up into the mare to go through the cervix. The vet will demonstrate that later very much more effectively than I do. Uh, from here we would go into the record keeping. It, to me, one of the most important parts of this whole process is keeping a very solid record of what's going on. Now your vet's going to keep some records. The good vets will keep um, a lot of records. I tend to put more detail into my records. Uh, glasses, because I'm old. Uh, so we just keep a book and you know, here I just keep all the supplies that I'm going to need. I keep some highlighters, sticky notes, my pens in case I you know, have special notes to take. And then I've just tabbed this book for each mayor. So you can see then we keep information recorded here as to the mayor, the stallion that she's going to be bred to, uh, the, the phone number for the stallion farm. Uh, we keep a record here as to the dates of collection in the months that we're going to be um, getting semen in. So this particular stallion uh, in February and March, they collect on even days of the month. Some farms will then switch that to where then um, April they, may, they will collect on odd days. Uh, some stallion farms will collect only Monday through Friday or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Or, you know, they'll have specific days and you have to research each of your stallion farms to know uh, specifically what their collection routine is. Uh, from here, because we are a, um, I do do this for the public, I keep record here again of who the owner is and the owner's contact information. Uh, from then, there we're going into, we track the date and then details and comments. I'll track what's going on on the left ovary and the right ovary. What's the status of the cervix? Is it open? Is it closed? Is it softening? And then any miscellaneous comments about it, the, the level of edema that's, that's evident. Um, when we get into uh, where we have um, follicles that are getting ready to breed, we just track that follicle growth along um, so that we can see clearly uh, the, the growth of it, how much it's growing by day. Um, a kind of a common standard is that, is that follicle can grow, say, five millimeter, millimeters per day. That would be a standard thing, but boy, these mares will do, <laughs> they will mess you up if you try to count on that. So it's very important, the vet will say, let's recheck in two days, let's recheck in five days. And you want to keep that record here so that you know exactly when you're rechecking that mare. Uh, we'll track everything from when they ovulate, and then when we're doing pregnancy checks, and you know, everything right through uh, when we are checking their progesterone level to ensure that they have the environment uh, within that they can actually support that, that baby, that embryo. Uh, we, we track all of those results. I can't tell you how important this information is. All right, kind of continuing along the line of record keeping, uh, one of the important things is to know day by day what the activities during the day need to be. So a friend made me this great board that we're able to easily track the days of the week, and I kind of I re rotate it. So you'll see here, t this is today, February 4th through the 7th, but then I started over again with the 8th, 9th, 10th. At the end of the day today, I will um, clear this, and this will become the 11th. So I'm always looking at my book, looking at the calendar, and saying, okay, what's upcoming? What's the next thing that comes in? What mares do we have to have in tomorrow? When do we need them? Uh, what are we doing? Uh, so like here, 
We've got three that, and this is unrelated to breeding, but we'll be trimming feet um, on, on three tomorrow, or tonight or tomorrow. So we've, we've got that here. You can see here for today, we checked Spice uh, for her to see her ovulatory status, uh, which is not right now. She's just in a transitional heat. Um, we had a man named Nala in that we removed her Caslick on, and we'll talk more about Caslick later on um, when some of the later series. But you can just kind of see that it's just a rolling record so that you're able to always at a glance see what are we doing today? What's, what's up on the schedule today? Okay, back again here. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, disinfecting the areas, you know, keeping a good cleanliness around uh, the operation and in particular around the breeding part of the operation. Uh, we generally keep on hand three different types of cleaners and disinfectants. Uh, bleach, just plain old bleach available at your local Dollar General. Uh, it will, bleach will clean a lot of things. Uh, it's a really good product to have around. It's not going to clean everything that you want. So the next step in the process, we look at chlorhexidine solution. This is used commonly in a lot of veterinarian clinics. Uh, it's a really good disinfectant and cleaner. Uh, it kills a lot of diff just different bugs and viruses that are around and helps keep things a lot safer. An additional cleanser that we use a lot with the horses and then with the cattle is Symbiont. It's, it's, it's called an agricultural wash. Uh, it does clean on contact, so you don't have to it doesn't have to dry before you can replace the animal you know, in that environment. Um, the other reason we really like it for the horses, and you'll see right on the labeling, because it does kill EHB1, E. coli, Salmonella, H1N1, uh, bacteria, funguses, and viruses. Horses, when we're, we've got horses transporting in for breeding, we, they leave, we've got other ones that come in, it's very important for us that we make sure the environment that we're bringing these horses into and managing these horses is as, as clean an environment as we can make it. So we focus very highly on these types of products. All right, so the application of these products, uh, it's pretty simple. We just put them in a, in a sprayer. This is a three gallon sprayer. They come much smaller. And of course they come larger, but I want something I can actually pack up and down the barn aisle. Uh, so it's easy, the directions all tell you how to mix it with water. You just put it in the, in the sprayer and spray to your heart's content. So in one of the clips, you'll have a lot of information about some of the hormones that are used in order to manage your mare's cycle. Uh, in the event that you become responsible for storing any of those hormones, uh, your vet will be able to tell you uh, these, this set of hormones are available or able to be stored um, at room temperature but these need to be climate controlled and in a refrigerator. So there's your trusty refrigerator. Uh, you always want to kind of have those available and store them the way that your vet instructs you. 